Hi everyone, if you're an existing subscriber, hello and welcome back. If you're new to my channel, hello, welcome and why not hit subscribe now? I'm your host, Alicia Vittoria Keen, and I've been interviewing inspirational people and businesses to find out how and why they inspire others. This week, I spoke with singer-songwriter Luke White. Here's how it went. <laughs> the channel to begin with if you could just introduce yourself who are you and what do you do uh so i'm luke quiet and i'm a singer songwriter from bedfordshire and yeah i've been writing writing songs since only when i was 15 i'm 21 now so i've only been writing for about six years but uh you know i started releasing in 2018 and I went to uni in Guildford at ACM Academy of Contemporary Music and was gigging around London and all that and doing like the circuit sort of thing. And yeah, just still writing and releasing and getting some good good contacts going and stuff. So it's, it's exciting. And um, yeah, just releasing a new single. So it's it's good. It's weird in lockdown because you can't do as much, but yeah. <laughs> right, I know you said there that you started mm -hmm. like performing, writing songs when you yeah. were eight. Yeah. Was it literally at the age of 15 or was music your passion from beforehand? Yeah, yeah, that, this is what I mean. So what, what I first started was guitar. So I really was just a guitarist from when I was about um, 10. So I got a guitar from uh, Toys R Us, lol. Remember that, lol? Yeah. My nan, my nan got it from <laughs> Toys R Us, what a G. Anyway, so yeah, I played guitar really and played in bands in, in school and we won bedship at the bands all playing, playing rock guitar. Yeah, that was funny. But anyway, um, and then I thought oh, I might as well try singing. And then I did that when I was about 14 and then I started getting better. But really, it's not true when people say you're born with talent because you're not really. You really have to work at it because I was shocking at singing, like terrible. So, yeah, so it was about the age of 14, sort of um, 15, I started singing and then writing. And then I went to this studio where I am um, local to me where this guy sort of I was playing guitar for him and then he sung so he was like yeah do you write some songs I wrote some pretty bad songs you know but they weren't great and then he developed me as a songwriter and a vocalist and then you know uh from from then it just developed and developed and I um yeah started recording and releasing so it's so it's, it's, it's a journey <laughs> it is so you say there that, that anyone can learn to sing they can learn to play the guitar obviously singing is always a little bit of a difficult one because yeah some it's people bigger. actually have a good voice and others have to work that bit harder do you think it's the passion that someone has that helps them to improve yeah definitely i mean i'm not saying that everyone you know if they try and learn to sing or play a guitar they're going to flourish straight away you know what I mean or they're going to even be able to do it but as you say I always what like it sounds cringy but I always wanted to play guitar so that was that starting point and I was really passionate about the guitar and I had lessons like weekly and really I got like these theory grades which are really really good and stuff and I think having that um drive to like do stuff like that just with guitar to start with sort of led on to then when I was singing and then developed a sort of you know songwriting and singing uh, and you know if you want to do it you know what I mean but I'm sure like some people they bring, take up the guitar they take up vocal lessons then like a couple of weeks later they're like nah <laughs> you know so yeah it's just it just it just depends what you what, what your what your goals are really. Being a musician is quite a hard thing to get into it's hard to get mm -hmm. noticed do you yeah. do that full time or have you got another job? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I was at uni doing music, so that was like a good time for me, obviously, you know, it's, it's, you know, a, you student loan and all that, and then, you know, I was doing gigs weekly, so that was good, but now, you know, I had so many things in the pipeline, which is annoying, but because of COVID, they stopped, and I was going to be, most likely be doing music full time, I was teaching guitar a bit, and then I was doing function work, and I was doing my own artist events and stuff like that. But obviously, function work is live music. So you can't do that. <laughs> Teach a guitar in schools, so you can't do that. So yeah, I mean, as I say, 
the aim is to get, you know, just be doing the artist stuff, mainly in songwriting for other artists and stuff like that, which is something I'm looking into. But, you know, as long as, you know, you're doing different things and that's what, what's the hardest, I think, is like making money just from being an artist. And I think that's the only way you can do that is by building a solid fan base or being signed to a record label, you know what I mean? Getting to that stage where you've got a label backing you and you, you've got that income from there. So as I say, I just sort of, do a load of different things in music like teaching guitar and um well I was playing live and things like that but I do have a part-time job at the minute just because I can't play live but you know but that's you know it's life at the minute but yeah yeah so basically full time <laughs> do you think doing those other things has helped your music career progress um what as in all the like teaching and things like that yeah teaching because they always say if you teach if you teach someone else, then a lot of the time it proves like yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 100%. Yeah, because when you're teaching guitar, especially even beginners and stuff like that, you sort of you sort of remind yourself of little things and you, you always sort of try to install habits in the person you're teaching. And it gets you, uh, as, as bad as it is, but it gets you out of bad habits. So sometimes you're like, oh, sugar, I'm doing that. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, and obviously live stuff and function work function work is very good for your live live performance and development because you're put in this situation sometimes with say you know four other musicians sometimes you never meet them because you're they're all deaf like deaf musicians so you, you learn the songs you turn up and you play and that's such a good thing to be able to do you know what i mean and even playing guitar in say a band it's like having being able to do those two skills definitely developed me as a guitarist and uh, and a vocalist and you know the teaching in terms of you know it's all, it all it's all practice isn't it that's really i think the main thing it boils down to it's all practice that uh, that leads to the development as an artist because it's all about the, the development of, uh, of your ability that sort of thing so yeah in terms of practice how often do you practice is it every day is it every other day yeah well i try to write songs every day so yeah, it's not so much practice anymore. Like like when I was learning guitar, it's more, you know, just writing songs. Still practice, you know, I guess it's like make, you're getting better at writing songs. But yeah, I, I play every day and sing every day recently, which is like writing by other artists. So you get to breathe. It's like, you know, pop style song or, or like more um, sad songs or something and like in the style of this artist. And that's really fun. And trying to get better at that and practicing and writing different styles because it's so important i think if i if you want to be a songwriter as well to be able to play in all sorts of genres and styles because i'm primarily my own stuff is singer songwriter sort of you know more ben howardy type sit like proper lyrical stuff but there's pop stuff that's all about the hook and, and all that so yeah it's it's definitely practice every day so yeah developing every second <laughs> Where do you find that yeah, inspiration no. when you write the songs? Where does that come from? Do you just sit down pen to paper and go, I know exactly what I'm going to write about? Or is it something you've seen, a feeling maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it just varies. Like sometimes I write something in like half an hour or like things you see in life. Or it can be simple as like a love song, an experience you've had, you know, with an ex or someone someone you're with at the time so you're in love or you're out of love or um like my new single keep holding on that's all about lockdown so mm -hmm. things like that it's taking all different bits from what i've seen during this time and putting them in it piecing it into a song and a story you know what i mean so it's it's, it's all a story i think and specifically in my style it's very focused on lyric like the lyrical content and stuff so um, a lot of metaphors and different ways of saying things but yeah so the lyrics are very important storytelling but where I draw that inspiration from is just life experiences and you know you know as I say love you know um, just life whatever's happening in the now so yeah it's, it's all sorts of things but as you say yeah piecing things together to make this story come to life sort of thing so, and making yeah. people relate to that story as well yeah exactly like my new single sorry <laughs> sounds like i'm plugging it like a <laughs> oh my, <God. laughs> my new single <laughs> yes. 
yeah, like relatable, uh, writing about something that's relatable to the times that we're in or a love song. And people can relate to love songs like There's No Tomorrow. You know what I mean? There's love songs that like come out every day and there's so many around. But even a situation you've gone through, can someone will listen to it and they'll be like, wow, I relate to that. And I've had a few messages about some of my songs and people being like, wow, it really hit, hit me off. And that's what makes it really nice as well when people actually think, wow, I, I, I felt that too, which you don't actually think that's going to happen. And then people listen to it and they're like, yeah, wow, that, that helped. Thank you. It's, it's nice, but yeah. <laughs> you have also got the backing of Billy Lockett. How did that come about? I, I, I actually just messaged him to be honest on Instagram because I saw he worked with someone um, like just a random artist. And I was like, wait, does he work with like random people? So I messaged him and then he was like, oh, cool, man. Just send, send over some stuff and then sent him some demos and he liked them. And then he just invited me to his studio and we recorded uh, sing that new single. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to hopefully go back to his studio on the 22nd this month. So record another single. But yeah, it's just, it was just about messaging him and he, he sort of works with a few people. If he likes their music, he'll sort of get them down and work on it if he has an idea for it or like a vision for it and he's such a talented guy like I mean he's done so well for himself you know he's very very well respected in you know singer songwriter category of the industry so yeah he's really cool and he's he's, he's certainly helped share the song and stuff so yeah he's got a new single out on Friday as well which I'm very excited for yeah. <laughs> so yeah no he's a legend really really cool guy but yeah it was, it was just about it's just like everything it's about messaging seeing seeing what what they think yeah most definitely now going back to your 15 year old self just mm -hmm. starting out with your songwriting did you ever think that you'd be releasing a single now no <laughs> no Je i really i actually Je i just didn't like the idea of singing whatsoever it actually made me feel like sick like just the thought of it like when i was younger i hated the idea of it it was just something that i would ne i never picture myself doing or being good at because I always, like I say, I played in bands and there was always someone singing and I just played the guitar and guitar solos and that was like my thing. But then, um, yeah, you just try it out, didn't you? And really my voice was so, so bad to start with. Like, it's unbelievable. Like, oh God, if anyone saw the videos. But um, yeah, so it is, it is very cool to see where I've come, um, got to, but with the help of a lot of people that help you develop. And I think going to uni helped and, you know there's a lot of good contacts I got there and then you know being near London because I was in Guildford I could just go to London on a train and be there in 20 minutes and go to a gig or an open mic and then you know what I mean and those two years like they they really like boosted my confidence and performance like I can get up to the stage now and I feel fine like I don't really have that many nerves beforehand so it's crazy to think that compared to you know when I was like 14 15 so yeah def definitely crazy <laughs> For someone watching this who's just starting out, maybe the same sort of age as what you were, what would you say yeah. to them? It's just about, you know, really practicing and working on the style you want to be or, or listening to the people you're inspired by and just trying to say or trying to write a song, listening to people inspired by and try and draw things from that and vocally just working on it and writing songs because that's the best way to practice. I never had a vocal coach. Or, or any lessons like that and there's stuff on YouTube you can learn from and you know it's great to get vocal lessons I really would probably recommend it but and, and it's great for technique um, but like I did it was all just practicing working really hard and just keeping at it and you know trying trying to really work on different parts of your range and don't push your voice too hard and don't expect too much from it when you start but then you'll, you'll, you'll get there eventually from writing songs and practicing. It's just all, you know, practice makes perfect. You know what I mean? Classic saying. <laughs> yes. What um, type of like YouTube videos would you recommend for someone wanting to improve their techniques? Who did you listen to? Oh, you know what? I, can't, I, I must say I can't remember now. <laughs> but I'm being honest. I really don't remember. Um, it was more it was more so like you know you sort of click on a random one and be like you know try some warm-up techniques but really mostly like i say it was about listening to people just generally listen to the song sound spotify or a cd or something and just you know listening to what they're doing with their voice and you know all these people like ben howard and um damien rice and even ed Sheeran, you know classic and then uh 
uh, you know, like Dermot Kennedy and people like that, really shape, shaped the, the way and the tone of my voice, just listening to them. It's weird how much they can influence you. So yeah, I wouldn't say there's any specific, specific videos I can I can I can recommend, but just go on, just search it up, and there'll be something for you. <laughs> oh well, thank you very much for sharing that. So finally, I have ten very quick questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Favorite Billy Lockett song? Hard act to follow. It's a beautiful song. It's, it's, he's got some lovely falsetto in there. Beautiful man. <laughs> Back in song. Who's your biggest inspiration? Mm, biggest one. This is the thing. There's a few, but I would say someone like Ben Howard or Damien Rice. Oh, I would say that they're... one. Okay, Ben Howard. Let's go with Ben Howard. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Where does your inspiration come from for your music? I know we touched briefly on it, but. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it is just um, just life experiences, really. I can't say much more because I just write write note things down that I see or, or experience or if something, if I remember something, that's when I say I just sit down and go, you know, bash out a song or something. And like I say, again, different artists I listen to, that's where I draw inspiration, uh, um, inspiration from their sound and their their vibe sort of things so yeah it's just them two things really that can contribute to the sound the final product okay fizzy or hot drinks um fizzy definitely i mean i do love a hot i do like a cup of tea but i, I, I love it love a can, can of coke <laughs> <laughs> would you ever do a musical theater production um Oh, I did one in school. I did hairspray, and I, this is when I this is when I was terrible, terrible at singing. So really, I feel sorry for anyone that, that had to sit through that production. I was I was Corny Collins, and I really was Corny. It was it was quite shocking. So I feel sorry for anyone that witnessed that. Um, but yeah, I would. I, I guess I would. Maybe I don't know if it suits my style, but you know, never never know further down the line. I might I might fancy you know doing a bit of musical theatre. <laughs> what is your favourite musical? Mm. I do like Hairspray, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. It's banging. Um, uh, Wicked, that's one, isn't it? But I, I've, 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 I've seen a load of stuff from that and I, I love, the, love the music from that. So yeah, Wicked and Hairspray are good. Okay. Smarties or Haribos? Um, Haribos, classic. Love them. <laughs> chocolate or Horlicks? Hot chocolate, yeah, definitely. Who says Horlicks? <laughs> okay. okay. Classical or pop music? Pop music. Imagine if I just straight up just surprise everyone. It's very classical. You never know. <laughs> never know. Yeah, classical. It's just in my earphones all the time. Anyway, yeah. And one motivational tip for someone who's watching this. Keep going, my friends. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, just keep trying, especially in this time. It's not not easy, especially with things like arts and um, you know music and performing and even stuff like you do. I mean, it's a very uh, um, you know in person type thing and a social thing. So yeah, just keep keep pushing. Try and find different avenues in what you do. Yeah, just keep keep pushing and um, working and. I'm sure it will benefit you uh, down the line. So, yeah. <laughs> well, fantastic. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. It just goes to show that if you really put your mind to something, you can achieve it. As we heard Luke speak about, he was never that great at singing, but he put the time and the effort in and it paid off and he was successful. Now, you can follow Luke at the links here. If you have someone that inspires you, comment below. I'm always so interested to find out who others find inspirational. Likewise, if you think your story can help others or have an inspirational story to tell also, comment below, drop me a message on social media or even drop me an email. On Sunday at four o'clock, I'll be speaking with Nikki Richardson about her journey working within the Cambridge weight loss plan and the different struggles she's faced along the way. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, 
Comment below, let me know what you think, and don't forget to hit subscribe. See you all on Sunday. See you later.